All right, so closing in here, we got number 13, which we can uh, deduce a bunch of things and skip a lot of steps from the previous problems we've done. All right, so we got a one kilogram wheel of one meter radius in the form of a solid disc is rotating at a rate of two rads per second. So let's draw that out. We got a disc, a solid disc of radius, let's put here, radius, and this is zero, uh, this is 1.0 meters, boring radius. And it's a solid, so we'll just do something like that. This is mass is equal to one kilogram, boring mass, and it's rotating at a rate of two rads per second. Okay, so what does that mean? Rotation is angular, right, velocity, and that is two rads per second. You should also know that rads per second is angular velocity. So if you see this and you don't know what to do with it, look at the units and that should tell you that this is what we're, we're going for. Okay, that's given. And then what is the total kinetic energy of the wheel? This time they give you the moment of inertia of a solid disc, which is I is equal to one half M R squared for a solid disc. Okay, so what are they asking for? They're asking for the total kinetic energy of the wheel. So energy initial is equal to energy final. So remember in the previous problem we did uh, kinetic energy, initial plus potential energy plus work plus kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. So we don't need all of this because now we're experts and we know that when they're asking for the total kinetic energy, it's only this one. And we're also experts because we know that there is one half mv squared, which is translational motion, plus one half i omega squared, the one we don't like, which is rotational motion. So this is the only thing that they're asking for. Okay, so the rotational motion is because this thing is spinning and this is translational, which is up and down in the Y. So if I had like a little dot here and it rotated and now it's here, this is Y initial, this is Y final. So it has translational motion and it also is spinning. So it does this stuff here. Okay, we have this and what do we need? So this one, this part is tricky. So we, we know this, right? This is the total, but there's nothing hanging from this, right? There's no little dots. I just put that to show you that there's translational motion. If this thing had like a, a cord, like a string here hanging with like a mass, which is usually, you know, over the ground and they wanna do problems like that. But this one has none of this. It's a terrible eraser. And it's just a spinning disc. Literally. So what can we do? Well, there's no translational motion because there's nothing on this disc that we need or can see. It starts from one point on the Y and ends at the other point in the Y or in the X direction for that matter. The only thing that's going on is rotational motion. So that's the tricky part for this one. A little booby trap, if you will. And that's it. So once you get to this part, right, then we know what, how to deal with this. I, I'm gonna replace with this stuff here. So kinetic energy, one half, the I is gonna be one half M R squared. The omega we know is velocity is equal to R omega. Velocity over R is equal to omega. So we know this, so we're gonna replace this omega with V over R, V squared, R squared, the R's cancel, and we have kinetic energy is equal to one fourth, the mass of the disc and the velocity that the angular velocity that was given to us. Okay, so that's it. We got kinetic energy here is gonna be Okay, so we got V here. So I almost tricked myself here. Okay, we got V here, but we weren't given a value for V. We were given a value for omega. But since we have a boring radius, I'm gonna use this formula here to show that 
velocity, or this one here, times radius and omega. We were given the radius of one, and omega is two. So the velocity is also two, all right? So just make sure that you have a boring radius with one, and this will work out. If not, when you get here, realize that this is not the same as omega. But that being said, we got one fourth, the mass, one kilogram, and the velocity is two squared. So then we should get kinetic energy, one joule, boring. But one joule, number C, so we're good to go. So the hardest part here is understanding that, you know, the kinetic energy is made up of translational and rotational. But here, they only want to know what's going on with this disc. And there is nothing hanging from this disc or anything like that that would give us translational motion. So we're stuck with this. And that's the only thing we need moving forward. All right, so this part is gonna be the hurdle to overcome for that one. All right.